Hi, I'm Michael Bravin. I'm the uh, Vice President of Market Development for Airy Inc. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Airy Alexa camera. And um, uh, I think where the best place to start is, maybe start on the operator side of the camera. What we have here is a 3.5K sensor CMOS camera. We're capturing an active picture area of 3K using a Bayer imager. And that allows us to derive a 2K or a 1920 uh, picture. The extra half a K is used for look around room so that you can see things that are coming in and out of the frame like you would in a film viewfinder. This model is the EV which has an electronic viewfinder. Um, the camera has the ability to record uncompressed airy raw out the back of the camera as well as dual link HDSDI as well as 3 gig all selectable from the menuing system which we'll look at in a minute. And the big thing that we announced uh, last week here at NA NAB, we're showing the direct to edit module. This is a prototype camera, so the final camera will be a little bit different. The cards will actually come in near the back of the camera. But what the direct to edit module lets you do is record ProRes 422 or 444 on Express 32 S by S cards. And the really unique thing about the module that we have is that as faster media or higher capacity media becomes available, this panel will be able to be removed and upgraded and you'll be able to put a new module on the back. Let's swing around and take a look at the back of the camera. The back of the camera has uh, several BNCs. On the top here we have an HDSDI monitor out, which can be a clean feed or can have uh, menu overlays from the viewfinder. Um, and you can also uh, apply uh, individual LUT to the monitor out, which is separate from what you're recording. The next connector is the return video uh, GenLock, and this is for locking several cameras together. Or if you have a B camera, you can send the signal from the, from the A camera in, and then you can, by pushing a button on the viewfinder, see the images that are coming from the other camera. Then we have here um, an external connector, which is allowed uh, a remote control and plug in several of the controllers that we make. And then two additional BNC connectors that can do either dual 1.5 gig or each have a three gig signal. And these are designed for uncompressed video or using what our T-Link system, which allows us to record airy raw as data coming right out of the camera. And then here we have a, a power connector and the power connector uh, operates from 12 to 36 volts. Um, as well as a uh, Anton Bauer or V-mount battery adapter that will fit on the back of the camera. The nice thing about the camera is that even if you're using a 12-volt battery, you can control 24-volt motors on the, on the camera using voltage up conversion that's in the camera. Now let's swing around to one of the parts of the camera which I think is one of the coolest, and that's the control system. One of the problems with uh, digital cameras is that you need to be able to control some of the systems, but you want to make the user interface simple enough so that uh, the normal things that you do on a shoot moment to moment or scene to scene are readily available but you still have the ability to get deep into the menus so what we've done is we've laid the system out with three areas there's a dedicated key area there's the LCD display with soft keys on the top and the bottom and then there's the control system and the way this works is that some of the functions that require dedicated keys like the menu button or the time code button or frame grabbing or the lock have a button per function and the record uh, the record button is on both sides, both on the operator side and on the assistant side of the camera, as well as the power on and off. To turn the camera on, you hold the power button in. To turn the camera off, you hold it in for three seconds. So you can't accidentally turn the camera off. And we have a guard around the record and, uh, that, that allows you to feel around to the side of the camera in the dark so you don't accidentally push the button. And it's recessed also. So the way the menu system works, is the, the, the dedicated home menu has the frames per second, the audio, shutter, exposure index ASA, the look, which is our LUTs, and white balance. And the way these menus work is you select, if you want to change the frame rate, you select the frame rate button, and then there's uh, speed keys that allow you to do it in ten, tens of frames, single frames, and tenths of frames, as well as presets for 24, 25, and 30, so that you can quickly change the frame rate. Or you grab onto the rotary encoder, and you can change it in, in increments of one, and then push in and select the frame rate. Then 
we have a home and a back navigation button that lets, takes us back to, to the, uh, the home menu. The other area of the, when you need to get it deeper into menus for setups, for doing things that you'll do in pre-production, you select the menu button, and then the rotary encoder, just like on an iPod, lets you select the menu that you, system that you want to get into, and when you push in, it goes down up to two levels of menus to let you change parameters on the camera. Again, just by selecting by pushing in, and then you can always hit home, and it takes you back to their home menu. What we have here are the uh, time code in and out, and then we have power connectors for 24 volt and for 12 volt to power monitors, accessories. Right now we're powering the ARRI monitor from the volt connector and we have a start and stop that works on one of the 24 volt by pushing the, the green button. Kind of hidden under here is the audio connector. And the way the audio system on this works is we have a five pin XLR that splits off into two three pin XLRs that lets you capture two channels of audio. The audio is embedded into the ProRes and into the HDSDI out so that it can be recorded for either a scratch track or you could do production audio, but that's normally not the way that people would work. We also have, <clears throat> the camera comes with a standard PL mount, but we have the ability to exchange that mount and put a, uh, a Nikon mount or a Canon mount or a Panavision mount so that you can use different sorts of lenses. The most important thing to, to realize about the lens mount is that Arri has a history of making film cameras, so the stability of the lens mount is a very important part of making a film camera. We have the same stability in this mount. So you adjust your flange distance with shims the same as you would on a, on a film camera. Um, and the camera, like I said, comes standard with a PL mount. We also have a really cool feature which built into the body are 15 millimeter mini rods. So you can use the camera on a 19 millimeter bridge plate and then when you want to take the camera off and put it on your shoulder, you've got the ability to, to attach accessories. Let's talk a little bit about the cooling system. I think the cooling system is pretty amazing. One of the problems with uh, digital cameras is that they make a lot of heat. And how do you get rid of that heat without affecting the performance of the camera. In many uh, cameras that have been out up till now, you blow cold air across the boards and that cools off the components. Well, one of the problems with that is that that cold air that you blow across the boards might have salt water in it or fuller's earth or dirt or small pets or some pieces of paper and that can affect the operation of the camera, of course. So what we've done is we've built a compartment that's sealed that has the electronics in it. We have the sensor in the front, the electronics package, and then it's sealed with heat pipes bringing the heat back to a radiator that's in the chimney here and we have a very large slow spinning fan that pulls air up from the bottom of the camera across the radiator and out the top of the camera and it's a very efficient cooling system this camera's been running since this morning and it's not even war hardly warm to the touch uh, the the fan is a has been a problem on many cameras because fans after a while start to make noise so what we did was we designed the fan as an expendable device remove four screws, you take the fan out, you put a new fan in, and you keep shooting. So make sure that you have very quiet operation. When the fan's working properly, you have less than 20 dB of, of noise so that you can shoot in a studio and your audio guy's not gonna give you a problem. Let's talk a little bit about the electronic viewfinder. It's one of the things that makes the camera very special. One of the problems that we looked at when we were designing the electronic viewfinder is that we needed to make sure that the viewfinder didn't extend too far toward the front of the camera because if you're using a wide angle lens, short lenses with a map box on it, you would run into the map box. So we, made, we designed it to be very narrow and it uses FLCOS technology with LED backlighting. And what this means is there's a feedback circuit. So the, the FLCOS is a sequential color viewfinder. We selected 1280 by 768 because when we looked at 1920 by 1080, we were able to get higher resolution, but to the eye, it didn't look any sharper. And the problem that we saw is a lower contrast. So we selected 1280 by 768, because that way we get a sharp picture for the operator to see the, the image, and also better contrast. 